Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, all of the books I read in May. Okay, so May saw the uh, Horror Mayhem event take place, so a reading event devoted to reading shorter works of horror, so um, short stories, novellas, uh, novels under 250 pages or so. Um, so I've definitely got some of those to talk to you about today. I read a good few of those in the month, um, but some other things as well. What I'm going to do today is talk about the books I read, so I've got 24 books to talk to you about. Um, I did also read uh, some horror magazines, so both short story magazines and kind of non-fiction magazines, uh, and I've done a separate um, video about those. Um, and I have been continuing to read manga throughout May as well, um, but I'm doing my, my weekly manga wrap-up, so I'm not going to talk about the manga in this video. So 24 um, books to talk to you about those. So let's go through those, and as usual, I'll go through these from least enjoyed to most enjoyed, um, with the, with the usual caveat that even the least enjoyed of these books were decent. Um, so there are no bad books here. Um, I enjoyed all of them in different ways, but you know clearly I enjoyed some of them more than others. Um, so let's let's get cracking. So first up then, uh, we have Feel Real by Luna Shorio. So I did include this in a, um, a video review I did a while ago of um, indie books. Um, so an interesting kind of indie psychological thriller um, about this young woman who's who's faced terrible abuse and about her trying to come to terms with that. Um, so uh, yeah, a gripping and interesting read. Um, next up, uh, Jersey Guns, uh, Executioner book number 17 by Don Pendleton. So I have been gradually working my way through the Executioner books since I started the channel really, um, but I actually hadn't read one for a few months. So it was fun to go back to the, the ultraviolet world of Mac Bolan, um, who's waging a one man war against the Mafia. This was not, not the best entry in the series by any means, but still quite entertaining. Um, Next up for uh, Horror Mayhem, I read a paperback from hell. So this is The Spirit by Thomas Page, which is a uh, kind of Bigfoot book. So about this guy who witnesses um, witnesses Bigfoot at the start of the book and some, some kind of buddies of his get killed as a, in, in an accident involving the Bigfoot. And he then goes to try and track down the Bigfoot. But there's also this Native American guy who kind of gets wrapped up in it as well. So quite an interesting and enjoyable read. Not fantastic by any means. And, and felt like it could have done with a few a few more death scenes, shall we say. Um, it kind of dragged a bit in the middle. But the end was fantastic. The end was really, really good. Um, Next is one uh, that I got sent uh, by the publisher to review through NetGalley. Uh, and I actually did a buddy read of this one with Michelle from the channel Michelle's Melancholia. Uh, so this was back, uh, Black Member by William Friend, uh, which is a, a very creepy book um, about this, uh, this guy who's got two daughters. Um, the mother has died um, and the daughters have got this imaginary friend called Black Mamba. Um, and as the book progresses you you know desperately trying to figure out if this if the and the dad is trying to figure out if this this black member figure is purely a figment of their imaginations or if there's something more going on it was it was really creepy at times but i felt like it didn't quite manage to pull all the threads together perfectly at the end which is why it's a bit lower down the, the rankings um next another one that was sent to me uh, for review by the author so this is out on a limb by louis paredes the first of his hecate's touch books so this is kind of an urban fantasy type thing rather than horror i would have said um about this kind of mismatched buddy team um, of investigators investigating uh, kind of strange goings on um in this world where lots of different people have got kind of different powers so it was a really enjoyable and amusing read um i had, I had a really good time in it uh next some some pure horror um psychic teenage bloodbath by carl john lee so this is um bad as itself as an extreme horror book i'm not sure it is extreme horror i did cover this in a in a review video i did as well i think um but this was a lot of fun so it's about a um this, this lesbian couple in the 70s uh, in, in the States who go to high school together. One of them gets attacked by bullies and, and goes into a coma. Um, and from, you know, from the depths of her coma gets terrible psychic revenge on, um, on the, the people who, who bullied her. Um, and, and pretty much everyone else as well, to be honest with you. So really gross and over the top, but uh, a, a good fun read. 
Um, next we have something I read a bit early for Dune on the Range. So this is a book I had put in my stack for Dune on the Range um, and then didn't uh, decided I just fancied something like this. So I picked it up early. Uh, so this is Gunman by Lauren D. Esselman, um, which, was, which was really entertaining. So it follows a, a young guy from childhood through to uh, kind of middle age um, in the West. Um, as he kind of goes from being, I think at the beginning of the book, he's, you know, kind of the, the, the young guy who um, who lives on a farm with his parents um, and gradually becomes the gunman of the title as, as the book progresses. Um, so it was an interesting depiction of kind of the changes that, that happened in America through that period. So it starts just before the Civil War and, you know, sees through the Civil War period and then kind of afterwards. So it, I, I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. It was a bit, I, I felt like it needed a bit more room to breathe. There was so much stuff in here that it felt like the book could have been a bit longer, which isn't something I say very often, but um, I enjoyed it anyway. Um Next then, uh, so a few more um, indie things that I read. Um, so Engelstadt by Samuel Church, which was a, um, a kind of a, a really gripping dark thriller um, about these um, these American uh, like film school students who go to, I think it's Austria, um, and stay in this weird, creepy town called Engelstadt where there's all this kind of neo-Nazi stuff going on. So there's a load of kind of occultism um, built into it, but it was just a really gripping and enjoyable thriller. Um, I then read, uh, so I've also got just ahead of that, um, A Bunch of Highs by James Flynn, um, which is a short story collection. So five short stories, recently reviewed it in the last week on the channel. Um, some of the stories in this I thought were really excellent. Sometimes the endings weren't quite as good as the rest of the story, um, but overall I thought they really showed imagination and skill as a writer. One of them was like incredibly funny. Some of them were quite dark. Um, some of them were more, uh, you know, kind of traditional horror type things. Um, one of them was quite dystopian. So there's a lot of different stuff going on here, but a, a really enjoyable collection. Um, and then just ahead of that, um, Skullface Boy by Chad Lutsky, which was my patron's uh, pick for our Patreon group read this month. Um, I'd never read a Chad Lutsky book before, and I really enjoyed this. It's quite a gentle story, so it's, it definitely falls in the horror genre in that it's about this character, Levi, who's got a skull for a face. But really, it's just about him traveling around and, and you know going through a kind of coming of age journey and, and trying to figure out what his place in the world is basically and, and also um, trying to track down his lost father so it was really moving at times really a sweet book but yeah I, I enjoyed that a lot um, some more indie horror um, so Sleeping Among Wolves by Robert Royal Poff a, a really gripping post-apocalyptic novella um, with a really sweet um, relationship at the centre of it. So it really tugs on the heartstrings at times, this book. Um, but is also like really graphic and violent and gripping as well. So I, I thought it was, it was very good indeed. Um, and then um, just ahead of that, uh, Clockmore Law by Frank O'Neill, um, which is a, an interesting and, and really engaging mix of um, short, horror short stories, some of which kind of recycle ideas from Creepypasta and things like that. Um, but all wrapped around this town of um, Kilbrony, um, which is in uh, Northern Ireland, um, and the kind of local lore and things like that around that town. So I, I thought he did a really good job of pulling all of those different strands together into a, a short story collection. Um, bit more indie horror. Uh, so this is The Fall of the House of Thomas Weir by uh, Andrew Neil MacLeod. Uh, which was a really kind of gripping, pulpy horror adventure um, set in the uh, 1700s um, in Edinburgh. So it has um, Dr. Johnson and Boswell, so two characters from history, um, investigating a kind of occultism and cults and things like that. Um, it really, what it gets really, really wild as it progresses, this book. Uh, but yeah, lo loads of action, loads of intrigue. Um, I had a great time with it. Just ahead of that, something that couldn't be more different, um, but I really enjoyed it. So that's Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. So kind of a romantic thriller, I guess, about this young woman who's been released from prison, trying to rebuild her life, 
falling in love with the worst possible guy she could fall in love with for, for various reasons, but about her, you know, tr- trying to rehabilitate herself, basically, uh, and track down her, her lost daughter. Um, so I just thought it was really engaging, quite funny at times, quite sweet, um, quite romantic, and just just a really just a really readable book. I just really enjoyed the, the process of, of reading it and seeing that story unfold. Um, just ahead of that, Flesh Rehearsal by Brian Bowyer. Um, so a fantastically dark and graphic story, as Brian's stories always are. Uh, I'm a big fan of his work. So this has a load of different characters um, all getting kind of mixed up together. There's a terrible kind of serial killer called the lobotomizer going around lobotomizing people. Um, there's a load of um, stuff around music and the music industry in this book as well. But just a really gripping and enjoyable, nasty horror novel. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. And when I say nasty, I mean that in in a good way. So there's some books I read which I consider to be nasty and, and I, you know, I say that to their detriment. Um, but this is a book which is, you know, is horrible, is deliberately horrible and very graphic, but n- never in a mean-spirited way. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, and just ahead of that, The Heart by so David Sodegren, so some more indie horror. So this is a, a book that, again, is incredibly graphic at times, but also really, really sweet. Um, so about a... Um, an elderly woman in uh, kind of coastal Scotland and lives in a, like a fishing village and property developers want to develop the land that she lives on um, and take her, her house away from her. She discovers this bizarre creature who comes out of the sea um, and films kind of a, a relationship. Um, I'm trying to think how to describe it, that they team up. They team up to, um, to try and fight these property developers. But there's loads of really lovely stuff in here about her dead, like her relationship with her dead husband, um, and also with her um, her grandson. Um, and it it manages to mix a load of different things that are quite different from each other, really skillfully into a really satisfying and enjoyable book. So I I like that one a lot. Um, just ahead of that, uh, Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. So very graphic, like insanely graphic. Very disturbing, but also darkly comic um, and a, a book that despite its excesses or perhaps because of it, its, its excesses, um, succeeds really well. So about a, um, a guy who's a, who's a necrophiliac um, who, um, who meets and starts a relationship with a woman who likes to eat uh, babies. Um, so it's you know it's extreme, but somehow he makes it work. I thought it was I thought it was quite an accomplished book. Just ahead of that, uh, a book from uh, Ecuador, um, Jawbone by Monica Ojeda, which is a, a kind of female coming of age story mixed in with all sorts of horror stuff. Just a really interesting book about kind of female power structures and things like that is it's a difficult book to describe it's quite kind of dreamlike and, and almost confusing at times but somehow it all manages to wrap itself together in the end and, and leave an impact on the reader um i thought it was a, a very interesting book and it's a book i'm very glad that i've read just ahead of that um something again completely different so the princess uh, princess bride by william goldman um, so I did do a review of this one on the channel if you want more info about it, but a, a mixture. So, so this is the book the movie was based on rather than being a book based on the movie. So all of the movie is in here, but you get a lot more as well. So you get this whole wraparound story to the to kind of fairy tale story of the movie, which is about how Goldman came to write The Princess Bride and his experience with the book, which he he, he positions in this book as being a real book that was written um, in another country, which is which is not true at all. Goldman made it all up, um, but it's really entertainingly pieced together and an interesting book about storytelling. Slightly ahead of that, um, one I read in the last week or so in the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami, um, a Japanese novel um, about a young Japanese guy escorting um, an American tourist around the red light district in in Tokyo. Um, really really creepy at times really graphic at times but it's got this central tension to it that is just so compelling 
Um, I really thought this was a, a very, very good book. Very dark, but really interesting. Some more darkness um, just ahead of that. Um, the Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. So again, I have done a review of this on the channel. Um, a very disturbing book about a group of kids whose parents have both died. So the father died a while ago. The mum dies in the course of the book. And they basically live you know, by themselves for a summer with no adult intervention. Um, goes to all sorts of disturbing places. Um, but a fantastically well written book. And has one of the best last lines I think I've read for a long time. Right, we are nearly there. We are down to the top three. So at number three, we have This Sweet Sickness by Patricia Highsmith. A fantastic book. A wonderful book. You should read this book. It was so good. So it's about a creepy guy who is basically stalking this married woman and keeps on sending her letters and, and wants to have a relationship with her. They've had some kind of friendship or relationship in the past, um, which she you know has put behind her, but he can't let it go. And the story you know follows that as it as it plays out there are loads of twists and turns as the story goes and it ends in a way that completely turns everything on its head in terms of your perceptions of the characters and the emotions you feel about those characters i thought it was an incredibly accomplished book um i'm really enjoying so i'm reading you know reading through all of patricia highsmith's work and i really do think she's an excellent writer and this I think is probably my favourite book um, so far that I've read by her. Okay, next up we have a play. So I think that's, well, it's definitely the first time I've reviewed a play or talked about a play on the channel. I think it's the first time I've read a play since I was at school. Um, this is The Pillow Man by Martin McDonough, which was recommended um, to me for my Disturbing Books project. And it definitely is disturbing. So a book set in a kind of police state where a, a guy who's a writer is taken into custody by two secret policemen who are questioning him and that effectively is you know is, is the play but it really really pulls you in and there's a load of backstory there's a load of stuff in here about you know, like the act of writing which was fascinating um it was tremendously effective and thought-provoking i really thought it was truly excellent there's a quote on the back here um like a blurb from the new york times which i thought was fantastic and really encapsulates my thoughts about the book it says uh, sometimes you don't even know what you've been craving until the real thing comes along this is the real thing this was great um and then finally um this may be a surprise for a channel that uh, purports to be about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Although, as I've often said, I do read a lot more widely than uh, than crime and pulp uh, and horror, indeed. So, my favourite, um, my favourite book of the month is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I just thought was wonderful. So, I've done a review of this, um, which you can watch, where where I say I think it's a pulp horror book. Um, it's just got so much going on in it. Um, it wonderfully pulls together all of the different strands of the story, but it just uses so many different techniques. You know, there is horror in here. There's mystery in here. There's romance in here. There's humour in here. Just a wonderfully complete and rich novel. Um, I really, really loved it. And I should say thank you to Jennifer Vest, uh, one of my patrons, who chose this as our buddy read uh, for this month. Uh, so thank you, Jennifer. It's probably not a book I would have read um, if you hadn't picked it. Uh, and I, as I say, I absolutely adored it. So I hope you found it interesting. Let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about um, and what you thought of them. Let me know what you've been reading this month. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.